20 past the hour, joining us now, member of the Foreign Relations Committee, Republican Senator Jeff Flake of Arizona. His new book, Conscience of a Conservative, a Rejection of Destructive Politics and a Return to Principle, is out today. Senator, in an excerpt from the book, uh, published in Politico, you write that the Republican Party is in denial about Donald Trump. You write in part this. It was we conservatives who rightly and robustly asserted our constitutional prerogatives as a co-equal branch of government when a Democrat was in the White House. But who, despite solemn vows to do the same in the event of a Trump presidency, have maintained an unnerving silence as instability has ensued? To carry on in the spring of 2017 as if what was happening was anything approaching normalcy required a determined suspension of critical faculties and tremendous powers of denial. If ultimately our principles were so malleable as to no longer be principles, then what was the point of political victories in the first place? All great questions. Um, how are, are you being received amongst your colleagues <laughs> for just, raising them? Just came out today, so uh, <laughs> we'll see. But I, I think. But you've been raising these issues for, for quite some time. I, I've been concerned for quite some Very time. Very concerned. Um, you know, in the book, we talk about uh, you know, being a conservative, uh, what it really means. And it means a lot on policy. Uh, I, I'm concerned that uh, the type of policies going forward, protectionism, isolationism, um, are, are really not conservative values and I am concerned about where the party goes if we embrace uh, those kind of principles but also being a conservative means something in terms of demeanor and comportment a conservative is nothing if uh, particularly in foreign policy if he's not measured and sober and predictable our allies need to know that we need to embrace our allies and recognize our adversaries and, and uh, to do otherwise is not conservative. So to ask you to go after your fellow conservatives or Republicans would, would not be fair, but what about, what about putting it this way? What were some of the key moments along the way so far in the Trump presidency where you and your fellow conservatives, Republicans should have stood up and said no? Well, I think, uh, and I, I have to say, many conservatives did uh, come out with firing of. But what uh, were Jim the big Comey. missed opportunities? I, I think the Comey firing, mm -hmm. the timing of it. Uh, you know, you can fire uh, the FBI director. Um, could have said that, hey, uh, last year did some things that he shouldn't have done. The way he handled the campaign wasn't good. Uh, but the reason given uh, that, hey, the Russia investigation, that should have set off more alarm bells, I think, than it did. And I think going forward, we ought to be careful. There's, you know, concern that the AG uh, may be fired. Yeah, that would be a real concern. And I'm glad that some conservatives are standing up and saying that certainly wouldn't be tolerated by Capitol Hill. Senator, in the book, you write uh, a lot of things in the book, but uh, in particular, you write about a meeting that Bill Buckley had with Barry Goldwater right. in 1962 at the Breakers Hotel in Palm Beach, a place where ordinary Americans meet regularly. <laughs> and um, Goldwater was not concerned so much with running against Lyndon Johnson or Nelson Rockefeller in a primary, but he was really concerned about the damage the John Birch Society was doing to the cause of conservatism within the Republican Party. So my question to you is, what's your level of concern about what the Freedom Caucus is doing to the image of conservatism and the Republican Party, given the fact that they cheered on, loved apparently, a health care bill that would throw more than 22 million Americans off of health care. Hey, we can argue about uh, what's conservative and what's not with regard to health care. I certainly, you know, think that uh, Obamacare needs to be yeah. significantly changed, if not repealed. Uh, I'd love to repeal it and start again, if that were up to me. Twenty, you know, about um, 200,000 Arizonans will wake up this morning without health care. They will have paid the fine, but they can't afford the coverage, can't afford a policy. An uh, even bigger number has, have a policy, but can't afford to utilize it because deductibles are so high. Mm. Uh, so we're really hurting out there in terms of where we need to go with health care. What I'm more concerned about is policies like on trade. Um, we have always been the Republican Party, a free trade party. We're you know, only 5% of the world's population, 20% of the world's economic output. If we don't find new markets for our goods, uh, we don't grow. And I'm very concerned about where the party is going and the kind of the anti-immigration fervor 
Uh, that's not the place the Republican Party wants to be in the future if we're going to be an inclusive party that speaks to a broader audience. Yeah, I mean, in our interchanges with you over the years, I mean, you know, and, and I've heard Democrats speak about you. You're a friendly, open guy, but there's a level, and, and it's just image, I understand that, but image is important. There's a level of meanness to conservatism now yeah, in this country that, that's bothersome. I do talk about that in the book, that you, you have to be meaner somehow, and, and uh, that that is not a conservative value. Uh, my biggest concern is we've got some huge things to tackle. Our debt and deficit, $20 trillion. We'll be adding a trillion dollars a year soon again to that debt. Uh, and the only way to solve that, if you look over the past 40 years, any decent budget agreement we've had has been when we've had divided government, when re Republicans and Democrats have sat down and said, we're going to share the risk. And right now, uh, we don't have that. If we ascribe the worst motives to our opponents mm -hmm. and demean them and call them clowns or losers, uh, you just lose the ability to sit down and solve the big issues and actually enact conservative policy. Uh, that's the, the, you know, the paradox of all this. You know, somehow conservative, conservatism has become you know, being mean or loud, and, and you can't enact conservative policy if you act that way. The president well, used the word mean first, just FYI. Go is, ahead, is, Steve. Senator, um, you speaking of a national debt as, a, as really as an issue of generational theft. Yes. Um, and a moral issue, $20 trillion in debt. How, how is it that, that, that supposedly conservative members of Congress are voting on a health care bill um, that touches a sixth of the economy right. with absolutely no idea how much it costs? Mm -hmm. To me, that's not conservative, it's utterly radical. And I wonder how the conservative movement has been hijacked by radicals who claim the mantle of conservatism, and, and specifically when we think about the John Birch Society in the 60s. What is their equivalent today? Is it the conservative entertainment complex that we see on talk radio, on some TV networks? Is it something different? What's the most pernicious threat to, to conservatism, and and why is it that we that we've seemingly abdicated any sense of principle with regard to spending? Yeah, that's a very good point. Conservatives are nothing if they're not concerned about the debt and the deficit. Uh, limited government is the you know, kind of the organizing principle around conservatism. Uh, you mentioned back, and Mike mentioned uh, at the time that Bill Buckley got together with Barry Goldwater and kind of uh, excommunicated the, the John Birchers from the party. Uh, that was because uh, they were called, I think the words that Goldwater used were the emblem of irresponsibility. Mm. And, and I think to be conservative can't be to embrace conspiracy theories or, or to talk about uh, alternative facts. Um, there are truths that are self-evident. Mm -hmm. and, and we have to, as a country, agree on certain things. If we don't, uh, we're going to have a hard time moving ahead and solving the problems hard that we times need. Hard times ahead. Uh, so j just to be clear, no, you, Senator McCain voted against, uh, right. you guys are great Arizonans, he voted against against the bill because he said he didn't have confidence it would go to conference right. and that things would come back and hopefully hopefully we get there. But it's just a, just a quick answer here. One, if, if he fires Mueller, is that a catalyst to move forward with impeachment? Um, I, I wouldn't want to say what it's catalyst for, but, uh, but we can't stand for that. So I don't think Congress will if that happens. You talked about the disposition and his demeanor comportment. Would you argue, one could argue, is that really the bigger issue here? Because if, at least if you got to debating issues and policies in a serious, substantive way, a lot of what you're talking about would come out. Is it that you can't get to that because he has so much personal negative facade and veneer around him? I or think the, that, the presidency? And it's, not, and it's not just him. I, I point out in the book, this is not just a problem of this presidency. Uh, this was a long time in coming. Um, I, I was entered to Congress in 2001. I came there after you know, running the Goldwater Institute during the 1990s while Mike Pence was running the Indiana Policy Review. We came to Washington at the same time in 2001 and Mike joked with me on the floor once. Uh, he said, I feel like we're Minutemen called to the battlefront, uh, and, and, and now we're told that the revolution is over, <laughs> and, uh, and now we're going to be talking about things like a prescription drug benefit or no child left behind instead of the big battles of ideas that Republicans used to engage in. Uh, but we became a coarser party during that time. 
uh, you know, the, the you lie, you know, standing up right. during the thing with uh, few Republicans willing to stand up and say, that's wrong, that's out of line. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think whether it's a Republican or a Democrat doing that, we ought to stand up and say, some things should be out of bounds. And, and I think we're losing some of that. So Elise Jordan has a question for you. Elise. Senator Flake, you talk about just how important it is to actually have principles when it comes to foreign policy and you know some of the damage that Donald Trump has done to our foreign policy. I'm curious how do you how confident are you in this administration's strategy when it comes to North Korea? Well, I have tremendous confidence in General Mattis uh, and uh, Rex Tillerson is a great guy. I, I do think the president has picked a good cabinet and surrounded himself with good people. Uh, he's done some good things, I think. Uh, Supreme Court justice is good, uh, some good federal judges. So I, I am on board with uh, some of what the president has done. Uh, but with regard to foreign policy, my biggest concern is, uh, as I mentioned, we have always stood for principles and have done so in a sober, consistent, predictable manner. And, and chaos is the last thing that our allies and our adversaries need to be seen. And, and I'm afraid they're seeing too much of that. And uh, our respect for international institutions that we had a, a hand in or were the major part in building, like NATO, mm -hmm. uh, the World Trade Organization. Uh, these kind of things I think that we need to respect and utilize uh, to hold our place in the world. And uh, I wonder about our standing around the world now. Do you, uh, do you think the new chief of staff, Kelly, can maybe help uh, rein in some of this chaos? I do. Uh, I, I'm glad he's there. I, I think there's a lot of respect for him on Capitol Hill. Uh, I like the start that, he's, that, he's, uh, that he has. And uh, so I'm, I'm very hopeful that uh, that will help. Okay. The book is Conscience of a Conservative. Out today, Senator Jeff Flake, thank you very much thank you. for being on the show this morning. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube. And make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.